Today we get to study a very boring and annoying and irritating dry topic. <laughs> Not really, no offence. It's one compartment open model, IV bolus administration. I personally didn't just, you know, get along enough with this subject to like it enough. But <laughs> anyway, I do have to make a video on it. It's gonna be this is gonna be an introduction video. We're gonna have a series of video lectures on it. Uh, like first I'm going to do the general introduction and then it's going to be the elimination rate constant then it's going to be a volume of distribution, a parent volume of distribution and it's going to be the clearance and things like that. So in this chapter what um, they usually uh, say is is the simplest way of the drug distribution and elimination that you can study on it, one compartment model and if you see, it actually is, because what they've considered here is it's one box, like you can say it's one compartment, and the drug is injected in it, and then it rapidly distributes all over the body. But um, the simpler example, uh, more simpler than this, what I can think of, like if you're from Pakistan and India, you're going to be taking dispirin and aspirin a lot. <laughs> like, we do usually take it a lot. So if you have a dispersible dispirin, and if you add it to a glass of water, it's going to take like 10 seconds or 30 seconds and it's going to be distributed all throughout the water. So you have a glass of dispirin. So in the same way, you can say that the glass is a compartment and the dispirin that just goes in it is going to be the drug. And the water that was in the compartment is going to be the uh, plasma concentration that we have. And that's how we get the apparent volume of distribution. Because the apparent volume of distribution, we determine it by the amount of drug that is injected and the plasma concentration. So we just can say that the plasma concentration and the drug, it makes up the volume of distribution. And this uh, compartment model, yeah, it's also termed as well stayed one compartment model. Now what happens is when you make a graph, you get a linear line, you get a straight line out of it. But if you don't get a straight line, that means the drug wasn't equally distributed throughout the body or throughout the compartment, what are you, whatever you're considering over here. Now, what we have next is the elimination rate constant that we're going to study. And the elimination rate constant is just like the rate at which you're going to take the drug out of the body. So obviously you put the drug in the compartment and now you're going to take the drug out of it. And when you're going to take it out of it, we're going to term that as the elimination rate constant. And uh, one, per, uh, one compartment model, what it does, it predicts plasma concentration as a function of time. Right, and it doesn't predict the actual drug level in the tissue. Like you're just going to consider the time of it. It won't tell you the exact drug level that is going to be present in the tissue. So you can't get the exact uh, drug level, but you just can um, consider it as okay. This much time passed, so this is going to go through, and this is going to be the process about it. It won't give you the actual drug level. Like it won't say, oh, here's a tissue, and uh, this got 10 mg present in it, or something like that. It won't go like that. So that's only for the introduction, and the next what we're going to do, the topic we're going to cover is going to be the elimination rate constant. And what you can do meanwhile is you can subscribe to me, or you can follow, or you can just share my content if you like it. Anyway, thanks for sticking by, because in my student life, I couldn't even bother to do that. I wouldn't even give five minutes to this, and I did pay for the consequences. <laughs> anyway, thank you for sticking along.